What's happening guys? Keith here with your June 3rd edition of the Impact Report. So if you guys haven't checked out already, you can check out my Impact Wrestling review from this past week's episode of Impact, available on the YouTube page. So this past week's episode drew 283,000 viewers and ranked 107 on Cable's Top 150. This is up from last week's 263,000, so it's good to see they are on the rise again. Um, so, the last two nights we've had Impact Wrestling taping, doing their latest round of tapings in Windsor, Ontario. Um, I'm happy to say that the amount of spoilers being posted was minimal. There were people stating a low attendance, while others denied that. Both nights were said to be sold out, but to be completely honest, the attendance really isn't what's important. Uh, I've been pretty vocal about the Orlando crowd, and it's really all about the fan interaction. I mean, from the clips that I've seen and from people in attendance, it was said that the crowd was very vocal at the tapings. So, something we were all hoping for once they left Orlando. Actually, a couple wrestlers had gone to Twitter and talked about it, one being Sugar Dunkerton. Uh, he said, For all fans of Impact Wrestling that have been enjoying the new direction and energy of the company, wait till you see these shows from Canada. This crowd is insane and passionate. Reactions are on a different level, and the action has matched. Uh, Brian Cage also wrote, Windsor was phenomenal. You guys were a hell of a good crowd and mixed in with the top-notch wrestling from these past two days. The future episodes of Impact are going to be fire. So, good to hear there what we were all hoping for from the Windsor tapings. And like I said, the fact that there weren't many spoilers being posted just added so much to it. I didn't even have to fear about staying off social media for the last couple of days like I did with the previous tapings because of the simple fact that they were everywhere. Uh, so tonight they are taping the Zero Fear One Night Only special. Uh, they have announced the majority of the card. I'm not sure if this is the final card, but uh, the matches are as follows. We have Eddie Edwards versus Trevor Lee. Madison Rain vs. Casey Spinelli, Sammy Callahan vs. Alexander, I forget his first name, Josh maybe, uh, Matt Seidel vs. Desmond Xavier, Austin Aries vs. Rich Swan, and the main event being Moose vs. Pentagon Jr. vs. Eli Drake. Um, I don't know about you guys, but this seems like a fantastic card. I can't wait for this to premiere. Um, I'm not sure actually when it will be available. If you guys can let me know, that would be great. But uh, yeah, this looks like it could be one of the best one night only cards in recent memory. Um, good to see Casey Spinelli back on an impact card. I was disappointed that she wasn't at the last couple of sets of tapings. Um, but yeah, so looking forward to that. So tomorrow morning, we have the Slammiversary press conference and public Q&A from the Real Sports and Bar Grill in Toronto. Apparently, this is the top sports bar in North America. Apparently, ESPN was quoted saying that. The uh, press conference and Q&A will feature Austin Aries, Moose, Madison Rain, Sue Young, and Gail Kim, along with the three-member executive team of Ed Nordholm, Scott Damore, and Don Callis. Um, no word if this will be available on Twitch or any other media outlets. Um, there was a rumor saying that Slammiversary will be streamed through the Global Wrestling Network. However, there has been no actual announcement of it, so I'm hoping maybe we will get that announcement tomorrow at the press conference. Would be fantastic news. Hopefully, uh, this kind of you know solidifies people into tuning into the. GWN, if we're going to be able to get live content streamed through there, it would be a huge selling point for it. And as long as they have all the bugs and everything else worked out, it it should be great. Um, Impact has also announced the August tapings, which will take place on August 12th and the 13th from the Rebel Complex. Uh, along with that, they have announced a special slam in VIP experience. Um, for, I believe it was $3.99, you get front row tickets to Slammiversary, the July tapings, and August tapings, along with the rest of the VIP experience. Uh, glad to see they're sticking with the two-day taping blocks. It's basically four episodes at a time a month, rather than, what, the 12 weeks or something they were previous ta taping. So that's great to hear. I think that's the right way to go about it. Um, 
and it seems like Canada is going to be the place to be. I'm a little surprised they automatically went with the rebel complex, but I'm guessing that probably had to do more of a deal put in place just for the fact that we haven't seen anything from the arena yet, and we're already doing a pay-per-view there and two tapings sets, so at least we know keeping it at two days. So this week's Impact Media teleconference was with Tessa Blanchard. Uh, I'm just going to run down the highlights of her on the commentary, uh, on the teleconference. Uh, Tessa says that her dad is an original Four Horsemen member as well as a WWE Hall of Famer, but to her, he's just dad. She goes on to say that he is very supportive of her in Impact as she needs to learn in a TV setting. Uh, she says that she is not under contract. There is a lot of freedom on Impact now, and they are really embracing the super indie tag. They are not giving out many contracts right now because they want to make it a place where people want to come and stay. Uh, Tessa says she has no interest in being in a stable, and she likes to be on her own. Before wrestling, Tessa wanted to do mu musical theater and Broadway Got the wrestling bug at the 2012 Hall of Fame when her dad was inducted. So that was only six years ago. Uh, Tessa doesn't think she had to dumb down her style and impact and was not happy with Mark Henry after that comment on that show, which was the busted open radio. And that was disrespectful to Rosemary, Allies, and Kiera Hogan's of the world. Although she says the fact that she is there now means that she can help push all the women up to her level of greatness and style. She teases that things are about to get very, very interesting. Tessa says it was very hard for her when she didn't get signed by WWE, but it has made her the woman she is today. She traveled, hit the independent scene, and was in the first ever women's match in China. She discovered who she wanted to be on her second tour of Japan, and that would not have happened in WWE. Uh, she talks about having a great time in Lucha Underground, and she says that there has been nothing but good to her. They have been nothing but good to her. She thinks Lucha Underground has a great roster, and the relationship with Impact only helps both promotions. She says she would like to go to Mexico at some point, and she finishes up by saying, tune into Impact over the next month. Things are about to get very interesting. So, good to hear positive things from Tessa. Um, and last but not least, so last night, Impact caught up with Sammy Callahan outside of the Windsor tapings. And, of course, Sammy was being Sammy. Here's what he had to say. You know what, Internet fans? You might as well tune in on Thursday to watch me fight Eddie Edwards in the effing woods. I really don't care. I really don't care who I offend. I will show up with a bat in hand, and I will create a ruckus. I don't care if it's in the woods. I don't care if it's in someone's backyard. I don't care if it's fans trying to fight me at the arena. Hell, I don't care if it's all in. I don't care if it's the Chris Jericho cruise. A cruise that I didn't get booked on, which is bullshit. What are you guys afraid of? Chris Jericho, are you afraid of Sammy Callahan? Ring of Honor, are you afraid of making money with the draw, Sammy Callahan? That is my question. The way I'm looking at it now, the only bigger bitch than Impact Management is Ring of Honor and Chris Jericho. So here's the thing. I might just have to get my baseball bat and show up on that cruise. Because I do what I want, when I want. Chris... <laughs> Chris Jericho had uh, this to say. Hmm. Now this is interesting. At the Sammy Callahan, at Ring of Honor, at Jericho Cruz, at Impact Wrestling. Interesting indeed. I mean, could you guys imagine if we got a Chris Jericho versus Sammy Callahan fight? Um, even taking place on the cruise and then streamed for one of the future episodes of Impact. I mean, that, that would be huge. Still very up in the air about Chris Jericho being on Impact Television, so this may just be an exclusive somewhere, but definitely interested to see where this is going. Sammy doing what he does best, and that is indeed causing a ruckus. So that is all I have for you guys this week. Thanks for checking the video out, and until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.